I'm here with Mike McKay, founder of the Warriors Mission Ranch. He had survived skydiving accident and he's here today to share his story. He had a high speed malfunction that resulted in a terminal impact. So stay tuned for the rest of the video to hear his full story. Hey guys, really quick before we get into the meat of this video, I just wanted to say really fast, if you haven't done so already, number one, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell down below. We put at least two videos out a week and I want you to stay updated on all the new videos we have coming out about the area so that way you can stay in tune to what's happening, things to do, and check out all the cool stuff out here. Also, I wanted to say, if you've got any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to call us at our team number, 719-266-2725. You could also email us at info at jdmret.net, and we will get back to you as quickly as possible. And that's any questions with anything whatsoever, uh, whether it's real estate related or just coming out here to visit or moving to this area, anything you've got question-wise, or even if you've got something else that you want to uh, just mention that might be a great video uh, to be able to do that you haven't seen yet, please, 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 please reach out. Uh, you can either call that number at 719-266-2725 or shoot us that email at info at jdmret.net or you can also post a comment in the messages below and we will absolutely get back to you as quickly as possible to answer all those. We serve as this area, we live in this area and we represent this area. We love working here. So hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm here in Peyton, Colorado with Mike McCabe, founder and president of the Warriors Mission Ranch and i am honored and privileged to interview mike to share his story today his story is very compelling it speaks of survival grit and determination that serves as a catalyst for his nonprofit organization mike thank you for joining me today yeah thank you uh, yeah um, share with our audience a little bit about the events that happened on that day that brought you to this point with your nonprofit organization. Okay, sure. So um, I served just about 17 years in the Army. I was in the Special Forces as a Green Beret. And um, I was stationed in Yuma uh, working at the Free Fall School, teaching military uh, free fall operations there. And um, I had an accident during one of those operations where I hit the ground at 119 miles an hour. Um, and it resulted in uh, spending almost two years in the hospital and um, crushed my, uh, had to get my legs repaired, pelvis broke, L345. I had a uh, massive brain injury. And um, it just took me quite a while to heal and and uh, get back on my feet and start uh, pursuing something uh, next, which turned into this. That, it's an unfortunate event that happened in your life, but super happy that you're here to still be with your family and to see your daughter, Brielle, yeah. growing up so nicely. Yeah, thank you. you. Know. Know. Um, so just to share with the audience a little bit, my husband and Mike served on the same Special Forces team. And so, um, there's a lot of things in common that, that we share. Um, so just to get back to the nonprofit organization, um, can you speak a little about, you moved from drugs rehabilitation into um, forming this company. What has this nonprofit organization contribute to veterans like yourself and like my husband um, recovering uh, from PTSD and other traumas that they've um, endured during their service? Sure. Um, I mean, that's a great question. I think, you know, unfortunately, um, I saw it personally, and then I saw it with other people in the hospital at the same time. The, the, uh, really, the method the VA was doing was to medicate people uh, to the point where they just didn't feel it, it, it took, it numbed them from the pain, but it also numbed them from cognitively, mentally. Um, they were, you know, it, it's at the point where when guys are even out of the hospital, 
they're taking so many pills just to go to sleep, so many to wake up, stuff just to be able to think for the day, and it turns into uh, little walking zombies almost. And so, you know, that's where I, I talk a lot about, um, you know, some of the oh, I, maybe over prescribing of drugs. And again, this is all just my opinion. I'm not a doctor, but um, I really believe that, you know, when we were at the top of our game in the military and you know whether it's being in the special forces you get to a level where you know you you rise to where most people don't um don't get but you get to that point through struggle and and overcoming those obstacles and you know and growing it's all about growth to get to a level where you're working at that um you know at that height of that level so I still believe everybody has that within them. Like nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is the circumstances. And yes. you know, you can either uh, dwell in those circumstances or believe a lie that like I was told, I would never walk again. I was told I would I have to wear a helmet just to function, you know, during the day. And um, you know, I could have believed that lie of, you know, feeling disabled and not uh, not pursuing my dreams or I could believe the truth was, which is God intended us to do great things. And mm -hmm. every, we have it within ourselves, uh, to go out and be more than conquerors in what we're doing. So I, you know, I really focused on changing the perspective of the obstacle, uh, the, that obstacle became my challenge to overcome. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And you were guided by God's grace to get you to this point where through equestrian training you're able to make a remarkable recovery and then so to now help those veterans that are in the process of recovering yeah absolutely i mean my faith is very important and mm -hmm. and probably the the pinnacle reason that um, helped me get to my recovery the way i am today um mm -hmm. you know but it's also it's the heart you know the, mm -hmm. the heart of never giving up never quitting you know, you're always in the fight. And, you know, if you keep that perspective of that drive, you know, and that passion, um, you're not going to just stop when somebody tells you you're not going to be able to do something. Exactly. You know? And um, so that's what I do now is I, I use the horses and the horsemanship program mm -hmm. to help with the personal growth of the individual. Because, like I said, they all have right. it within them. And so you're learning new skills and... Mm -hmm. um, working on ranches and working alongside these cowboys and you know all these different states in Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming. Yeah. And and you're seeing guys really become passionate and full of, you know, uh, a new fire that they can go out and do whatever the task is of the day, you yes. know. So it's pretty neat. That that's an amazing story. So Mike, can you tell us a little bit about how many acres you have, how many horses and cattle that can um, substantially accommodate maybe two to three veterans at a time or even more? Sure. So it's, um, you know, we built this, we built this facility to, you know, bring guys and bring guys in, be able to work and train in a real safe environment, um, but make it realistic. And so um, so I built an indoor arena uh, initially. Um, it's about an 80 by 80 uh, workspace that's in there. Um, we use a lot of, uh, there's a lot of inclement weather and different things like that. We have the ability to go in there and use it. Um, our outdoor arena is almost a 300 by 200. Yes, it's, it's huge. Yeah. Uh, even bigger than um, Pike's Peak um, I think it is, yeah. arena. Yeah, yes. I got a little carried away on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, um, but we, you know, we built that and basically it's just, it gives us so much space to be able to learn how to ride, rope, uh, you know, work these cattle and uh, all the aspects you're going to learn uh, or that you're going to do on the ranch. Mm -hmm. And so we practice all those skills here in a controlled environment. And then we're able to go into the national forest. We're able to go to ranches. Oh, nice. um, so we do initially work here on the mm -hmm. training site and then I take guys off site. So um, it gives us a good, safe uh, work environment. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about, about your workshop and what's involved in the workshop. Sure. Because I am surrounded here with a lot of leather crafting and yep. a lot of products that you've been producing. And then this beautiful saddle that we have right here. So Mike, tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. So um, 
I do leather work, and the reason I do leather work with the guys is because, uh, again, it just shows them. Most most people don't don't have that skill or do leather working today, right? It's kind of an old timey skill, yes. I guess. And um, but it's also something that's very you know it's tactile. You have to you have to see the end product in a full piece of leather, and how do you get from just a hide of leather? Yeah. to something beautiful you know like the notebooks or that stool or something else um but by doing that and teaching those lessons mm -hmm. again it's something that you know you're learning for the first time mm -hmm. you're going to make mistakes doing it but you you try you keep learning and then by the time you're done you, you made something that's beautiful that you can see that accomplishment in, in what you just did and so the whole purpose of that is to foster that feeling of accomplishment mm -hmm. so you could do this what else can you do you know, right. And uh, that's why we do this. So in your program, would you say that you're the prime primary instructor? And is the program developed in such a way to produce more instructors um, for the longevity of the program, giving you a little vacation, time with the family? Sure. I yeah. like the vacation part. We haven't <laughs> done that in a while. Very long time. Uh, no, that's exactly right. So yeah. I am the primary instructor. Uh, but as guys graduate through the program, Yes. Then they become volunteers, and then it becomes veterans helping veterans. Oh, that's awesome! Um, yes. You know, go through mm -hmm. the skills that they learned. Then they teach, and you know, when you teach, you really start to master that skill. Um, if you mm -hmm. can teach somebody else how to do mm -hmm. it, then you start to be able to have that ability to um, really own that skill, and and it also gives them, you know, they they feel like they're helping and giving back and paying it forward. Um, that's correct. So it's a great environment. With oh, the guys. nice. It, it's fostering the longevity of all of this crafting sure. that could very easily be forgotten. Yes. Sure. For the benefit of our audience, can you drill down a little bit onto how the details of how the horses would help the veterans? Like, what if a veteran has never been around such a majestic beast mm -hmm. and now he is in and around horses, super scared? How do you get him from that point to, rehabil to a rehabilitated position where he can now reunite with his family and then in e eventually contribute to his community? Sure. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's, that's the whole goal of this program. It's, there's mm -hmm. nothing... You don't get anything but intangible things uh, through the program here. But uh, the great thing about horses is, is, you know, I always say it's the mirror of our souls. Uh, you know, horses have the, you know, they're a prey animal. Uh, we're, we're a predator by nature. And they, to win over their partnership and their trust, um, it, it takes patience and communication. Um, but they give you instant feedback. And I think that's one of the tools that's so important with our guys is, um, you know, for example, I had a guy uh, go through our program and he just got so frustrated. Um, you know, he kept saying it's the horse's fault. It, everything he was trying to do was the horse is doing the opposite. And he was always pointing the finger at what was the circumstances of what he was dealing with versus, you know, when he realized and it, it gave it almost he had his own self epiphany where it was it was him instead of instead of saying it was the horse's fault yes he realized well i'm not asking this the right way and so that started that little bit of a change being self-aware and saying you know instead of uh blaming everybody else for what's going on and and like most men you know, anger and brutality probably come out first when they get yes. frustrated. Mm -hmm. And so learning how to look inward and communicate differently and then seeing the results of that change, it was it was incredible for him uh, to see that. That's so, awesome. Yeah, but, um, but we do it in three phases. Mm -hmm. So phase one, we do one-on-one -on -one with the guys. Mm -hmm. um, we work through all these leadership lessons through horsemanship. Mm -hmm. We really focus on a whole person concept. So, you know, physical, I mean, we're feeding, lifting hay bales, working out. Just the basics. Yep. Yeah. Mocking the stalls. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, you're still... You're, Grooving the horses. <laughs> yep. You're not sitting on the couch. You're, yes. you're struggling. Mm -hmm. you're, you're physically active, you know. And then mentally, you're learning a whole new skill set. Right. Uh, we do leather working and metal working alongside the horsemanship 
all just cowboy skills, which is neat, uh, but it's challenging these guys. So when they when they get to that frustration point, they learn how to overcome you know those challenges. Uh, and again, it's all within them. They're just they're just finding new skills and new ways to do that. And then um, you know we are faith based. Um, you know I talk about godly principles throughout our entire uh, program, uh, and it all is just it just relates to everything that we deal with in life on the outside, you know, and, and, um, phase two. So once they graduate there, uh, I bring the guys, you know, collected together. Uh, last year we did a ranch rodeo with our team and that was a lot of fun competing against other cowboys and, and, uh, the whole community got involved and there's two, 300 people here. It was mm -hmm. a great day. Um, or we take them to ranches and go work and help right. out the ranching community. Yeah. So, well, I know my yeah. son, um, well, you know, Shane, yeah. attended the Air Force Academy and he was yeah. on the flying team. And so he was um, instrumental in trying to get the cadets to come and contribute to the rodeo. So right. what aspect, that, you know, and how did the cadets do um, being exposed to a nonprofit organization and to the animals? So we got so lucky with that. Um, so the fly team from the Air Force Academy uh you know shane connected us we got linked up with their team captain um i hope i'm not saying that wrong but um you know we had like uh 2025 20, of some of the best individuals come out just what can i do to help and jumped yes. in and worked and did the task yes. without their without their help that that day was would not have been as successful as it was so um but it just shows how the community got involved, you know, and then, Definitely. you know, and yes. then they were all so intrigued by the program and, you know, and it just, it, it fostered that connection between the community, yes. what we're doing here at the nonprofit, our veterans, mm -hmm. and then all the spectators that came out to see it. Yeah. So it was great. Well, I think for sure they were super excited um, before they left. So I think they would want to be invited again I hope so. um, yeah. for the next rodeo. You bet. You bet. Yeah. So can you cite some examples of the students that went through your program or the veterans that went through your program and how they have now contributed to their family and, and, and their immediate community? Sure. So, so like I said, it was a three phase program. The third phase is the employment mm -hmm. process. So if they're not employed, we're helping them connect with, uh, you know, finding meaningful employment, something that they enjoy, something they'd be passionate about. Um, we have got a lot of connections now in the construction community. Um, right. Obviously, in the ranching community as well, places we've gone, uh, we've had ranchers say, we'll take on an intern and, and give them a shot. Um, and also the hunting community seems to be pretty popular with our guys. Uh, right. You know, diving in there is working as wranglers, working for the outfitters. Um, you know, so that's the employment part. Really, though, the um, just learning those lessons and realizing that, you know, you don't have to take a pill to numb a feeling. Yes. You just need mm -hmm. to re-energize, re-engage. Yes. You know, you're, you're not a victim of what happened. Mm -hmm. You're, you just know, it's an experience. Mm -hmm. It's what we had in our past. Mm -hmm. But we don't need to let that define us in what we are Definitely. today, you know. It is just so easy to adopt a victim mentality, it can you be. know. Yeah. Um, but you know, I I hear you when you say that you're faith based because if I remember your story correctly, you asked God to save your life in that moment. You had your terminal impact, I did. and He did. And I think that is true to the belief in god yeah you know? yeah whenever i do share that full story yes i mean that's the reason i share it is mm -hmm. to give god the glory for saving my life there's yes. no way i'd be here today mm -hmm. you know hitting the ground at 119 miles an hour but um yeah when i initially opened my chute after I, mm -hmm. you know um you know i realized i had a massive malfunction uh, and and i had split seconds to try to fix it and i immediately just said god please spare my life and it never was able to, you know, be fixed, and I right. wound up hitting the ground at, you yeah. know, at 119 miles an hour. That's a yeah. really, truly amazing story. Um, so, Mike, share with our audience who out there may want to sponsor or donate or volunteer to the nonprofit organization. Where can they find you? What are your sure. coordinates? 
we will uh again we love our volunteers in the community yes. and it's great mm-hmm. to have the community involved uh it, it's near and dear to my heart but also the veterans and the people that are participating you know to see that the people care um means a lot you know yes. to all of our guys um it's a program that we are working on making changes so that they go out and they're back in the community doing great things Mm -hmm. um being the fathers for their for their families and and so we need the support and and Mm -hmm. um you know if you feel you're able to help and give um this is a great you know a great mission a noble cause to help these guys just get a leg up you know and to you know uh in launching them from where they were to where they can be you know, and, um, um, and again, um, you know, we, uh, we really enjoy, you know, the community involvement. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been great, but the best way to get in, uh, in touch involved, mm-hmm. probably go to the website, uh, yes. warrior mission ranch.com. Warrior mission ranch.com. Yep. And okay. then, uh, mm-hmm. they can find all our content info there. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Mike, I would just like to say thank you so much for yeah. sharing your story with us and, Thanks to the audience for watching his, the full video to hear Mike's story and his, hear a little bit about his faith in God. Subscribe and comment to help with the algorithm. Thank you guys for watching. All right, thank you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And I just want to say again, really quick before you send off the page, make sure you hit that subscription button and that notification bell down below. Uh, that keeps you updated with all the new videos that we got coming out each week. And also, if you got any questions whatsoever for us, we are local uh, experts of these areas and we are local uh, real estate agents within these areas. And we love helping people out. We got people calling us all the time uh, for these, but please just call us 719-266-2725 or you can email us at info at jdmret.net. And we look forward to hearing from you and seeing you next time. Yeah. <laughs> I just I didn't have an ending. I know. <laughs>